Hello and welcome to the grand final edition of The Wrap, where we'll take a look back at the highlights of the 2009 season decider from Grandstand's broadcast on ABC Local Radio. I'm Luke Pentony. Melbourne claimed its second premiership in three seasons following a 23-16 win over Parramatta at the Olympic Stadium last Sunday night. The Storm appeared headed for a comfortable victory when they were ahead 22-6 during the second half. But a barnstorming comeback from the Eels saw the lead cut back to six points, with less than ten minutes on the clock. However, the Storm managed a late field goal from Greg Inglis to clinch the win and a third premiership in the club's brief history. Your commentators at the Olympic Stadium were David Morrow, Warren Ryan and Craig Hamilton. Melbourne defending the southern end in the first half again to kick off. Parramatta obviously defending the northern end or to our left and there it is the grand final of 2009 is underway and it's a deep kick that goes all the way down to Mortimer Riot loads to Moy Moy and Moy Moy is hit by a solid uh, solid defensive line and he plays it five metres out from his own goal line last play coming up Smith runs to the side he puts a little grubber kick in back towards the end goal area flying is Hayne flying is Slater Slater gets Hayne he gets him a second time he's tackled line drop out to restart the action gee there was some good footy in that that was a terrific deception there it was Cooper Cronk who actually flew under the ball and affected the tackle yeah a terrific deception with the kick it was hooked back to the post when for all money it was going to go down Parramatta's right edge here they go again the storm they've had some territorial advantage in the game so far the ball comes to the right and here's Cronk an inside ball to Dallas Johnson and he's taken about 22 23 out from the goal post Parramatta's enter the field as Smith will go to the left he runs across field he uploads to Finch and Finch decides to go and he's out lovely ball to Hoffman Hoffman will score oh, first That's try beautiful. lovely footy Gee, I tell you what, the Storm are up for that. And that was beautiful football from 5'8 Finch. And a great run from Hoffman, 4-0 to the Storm. Well, we've seen Hoffman do that so many times. It was a nice pass. And Parramatta found wanting, but they have not recovered from the kickoff, the Eels. The beauty of that was that Robson was half sucked inwards there. I've often said somewhere you've got to create an outside-in defender if you want to create outside space. And Finch did a terrific job there because he got he got Robson, the number seven, just in sucked in fractionally and opened the hole just ever so slightly. And Hoffman ran a beautiful line outside and into the gap, and they played the front man. Melbourne tend to do that early; they tend to play the front man early, and uh, they done it, done it brilliantly there. Here they go. Here's Cameron Smith, David. 22 metres out, 9 metres in. Opportunity to convert the Hoffman try. Looks good. Looks good. It's oh. good. Six nil. Storm are in front. What an opening. They're 10 metres out. Storm leads six points to nil. The ball goes to Finch. Away it goes to Hoffman again. He throws it out the back door. And would you believe the ball hits the deck? And luckily for Parramatta, Holmarsh fell on it because if he didn't, English picks it up and scores a try. In fact, Reddy fell on it. They're having an awful trouble with Hoffman. They are. He's working over Jeff Robson. 35 out from the goal line. Last play. Ball fed across now. Up goes a kick from Robson. Now, who's getting underneath this? Someone better call for it because Inu was racing through. Inu got a pass away. Ball's gone loose. It'll be a knock on against Parramatta. No Melbourne player went for that ball on the full. In the end, the referees let play go on and they're going to play the ball. The Storm 20 out from their own goal line. And Inu got the ball comfortably and almost, almost got Parramatta away for a try. Another solid sort of run from Tandy. He's 35 metres out now from the Parramatta line. He plays it to Cameron Smith. On it goes to Finch. He checks. He goes back to the right after starting. And now Cooper Cronk goes straight through. And Cronk only needs support. He looks for Chambers. Chambers will score. Shut the gate. Another try. Now it's Blair. Blair's got the ball. And Blair has scored the try. Oh, the big fella. Well, try on the back of a penalty. But nevertheless, some very good football. And Cooper Cronk, it was just a one-on-one. -on -one. We'll need a replay to see who the two players he's gone between. But Cooper Cronk's run the key. A, a lovely set piece and uh, from the penalty. Uh, they play left, but there's a beautiful switch play across the back of the ruck by Finch. And Billy Slater's involved. He gets it to Cronk. Cronk goes outwards and turns Chambers in. Uh, not Chambers. Blair. It's uh, Blair, the big number 11. We could swear it would have been the right centre. He's running in the right centre position. And, uh, well, it's a good try. I just want to see this one head on. It was a good a dummy, it. Warren. Cooper Cronk has sold yeah. a dummy to one of the Parramatta players, and he's only bought it slightly, but it was enough That's to it. open it up just to let him through the hole. That is the era Mortimer defends in. We'll just check it if we can get an end on uh, shot at that one. But you're right, he's thrown a huge dummy and straightened up and got through. He's made the break, Cooper Cronk. Here's uh, Cameron Smith. 
two metres in from the touchline. Eastern side of the field, 22 metres out. Opportunity to give the Storm a 12 0 lead. 14 and a half to go in the first half. Here comes Smith. The kick is high. The kick looks straight. I think it just goes to the, the, the near side of the near post. It looked as if it was going to get there, and then at the last moment, it just went the wrong side of the post from a Melbourne perspective. Finch in the centre of the field. He looks for a runner. The ball goes to Cameron Smith. He stands as if he's playing touch football. He offloads to Hoffman. Hoffman's in a yawning chasm. He's tackled only 10 metres out from Parramatta's line. They're really on pressure. He's got the pressure on him here, the yield. The ball goes to Inglis. Inglis tries a little chip over the top. Inglis was knocked over after he put the kick in. The, the, the storm are all claiming that he was deliberately knocked over. He was hit high. The touch judge on this side is having none of it. And it'll be interesting to see whether Bill Harrigan says has something to say. Oh, yes. Well, he was certainly taken out late he was by, taken out, uh, by he was Ben Smith. He was taken out late and high. And that is a typical case. Well, I don't know what the touch judge is watching, but you should get some glasses and never be allowed to... It's just, how do these touch judges miss these things? Well, he wasn't only hit late, he was hit high. And there's 20 odd seconds left in the first half. Of Reddy goes for a break, run out of dummy half, and he's going to be held 15 his own side of halfway. As we've got about 18 seconds left in the first half, the ball's played to Keating. He uploads to Manor. In turn, it goes then to Mortimer. Away it goes to Robson. He gets it away out wide and running the ball strongly. They've got the ball through Mateo just inside the Storm's half. Yeah, there's Hain? one play left in the first half. The ball is fed now to Robson. Robson floats it across to Hayne. Hayne's going to put a little kick in. The kick out wide just goes out into touch. He was trying to kick it for. for Growth. The ball in the end might have found Eric Groth Sr. who's sitting in the crowd somewhere, <laughs> but there was no chance of Eric Groth Jr. getting on the end of that. And at half time, the Melbourne Storm lead 10 points to nil. Keating from dummy half. He throws a couple of dummies. It's fed to Mateo. Mateo gets the ball away. Knocked down by Melbourne for mine. Picked up by Burt. Burt runs across field. It goes to Robson. He throws a dummy, goes on his own. He can't keep it alive. And the referee says, no, knock, knock, knock. Knocked down by Melbourne. Gee, I reckon that's a mistake. The ball goes to Keating. A work goes to Hayne. A long cutout ball that goes to Grace. Grace for the line. Grace will score. Grace does score. Well, what a try. What a try. Now, have a listen to that crowd. 10 4. Got a game on our hands now. We sure have. They used the entire. 68 metres of width there to attack in that set. And boy, oh boy, that was a technically bad pass that went to growth, but it was a winner. It was a first bounce pass to growth and a long one. And uh, like a lot of passes, he was able to get it on the first bounce, came in beautifully and cut back in field and get it in for a try. 10 metres in from touch, 25 metres out, Burt to bring it back to a four-point ball game. He moves in, the kick looks good, it looks very good, he converts the try. And it's the Storm leading by 10 points to six with 34 minutes to go in the game. It goes away now to Chambers, on it goes to Chitu Kronk, he hoists it high in the air, here comes Inglis, Inglis has got it, Inglis will score, oh what a try! He is an unbelievable athlete. He is an absolute freak. He is the best, guy, best player in the world. And there, we sure why. They're back in front by 14-6 with a kick to come from under the black dot. Well, just when his side needed him to do something absolutely out of the box brilliant, he's done it, Inglis. He's caught it on the full at pace and scored. Great kick, great try. You know, I was just about to say, I don't think that bomb is going to be attacked by Melbourne. I don't think anyone's going to get to it. And suddenly, Inglis gets there, catches it, and puts it under the post. Right in front of the sticks to send them away to a 10-point margin again with 30 minutes left on the clock. Cameron Smith's kick is true. And so the storm on the back of the converted try. We wondered what sort of impact Greg Inglis would have. Well, he's had some there. Ball's played to Cameron Smith. He feeds it away to Kronk. Kronk plays the front man, Cameron Blair. Away it goes to Slater. Slater to the line. Slater scores. Oh, that was a beautiful set piece. Oh, what wonderful football from the Melbourne Storm. I tell you what, the, uh, do you notice this half, Craig? Twice they've come to the right. They gave the left to work over in the first half to Hoffman. What do they do here? Front runner, right side. Have a look at it. That's brilliant. And badly missed there, Daniel Mortimer, the one-on-one. -on -one. Cameron Smith 
lines up the sticks. He moves in. He strikes it pretty sweetly for mine. It's pretty sweet in favour of the referees and the touch judge too because it's two points. Five metres out on the goal line. Parramatta on the attack. They come to the left. It goes to Mortimer. Mortimer inside ball. It goes to Hayne. Hayne's easily met in a belly hugging tackle. About five metres out on the goal line. Last play coming up for Parramatta. Storm lead 22-6. 11 left on the clock. A cross field bomb. Nielsen getting underneath it. Reddy gets underneath it. And I think you'll find Reddy's got it and scored. Well, that'll bring the crowd back in as a feature. Tony Archer points to the spot. It's a try. It's 22-10. Kick to come. And we've got 10, 11 minutes to go. There is time. It's unlikely, but there's time. Well, not much defence for that. Cross field chip bomb. Beauty from uh, Robson. And Reddy's a big guy. And he cuts it out of the air before it can be defended by well, anybody, Nielsen really. Nielsen went up for it, but Reddy's beaten them all to the punch. And a very good crossfield chip bomb try. Well, here's uh, Burt, 10 metres in from touch on the far side. 22 metres out. Opportunity to bring it back to a 10-point ball game. It's coming around. It's coming around. It's superbly over the black dot. And 10 minutes left on the clock. And the Storm lead by 10. 22 points to 12. Back to the centre of the field it goes. A long ball comes to Mateo. Mateo cuts out a couple. No, he doesn't. He stands in the midfield and offers it up. Now it's fed away to Mateo, to Moi 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 runs across field. Moi Moi might go all the way. I don't know. Yes, he has. Moi Moi might have gone in and scored. The referee's going to go upstairs, but Moi Moi has taken the defence. They've hung off and hung off, thinking he's going to pass the ball, but Moi Moi kept going, and he's got it underneath them. Well, Moi Moi has got that down in my view. Have they awarded this or are they no, going upstairs? upstairs? I reckon he's got it down first time. Rolls over, ball hits the ground. I think they've got to give that one. Just depends where his legs are, Warren. They've got to have a look at the front on, I suppose. Just to make sure his legs aren't in touch, if you know what I mean. Oh, I think he's well in field, isn't he? Well, let's have a look. See? His leg... No. Ball down. His I think it's a try. His leg touches the touchline, but at what point? Yeah. See, his leg touches the touchline, but it, did he touch it before or after? He's Here's Billy Bill Billy decision. He's not going to have Benefit another Benefit of the doubt. Try. Uh, Bill loves, <laughs> Billy loves the drama of these big games. Here comes Burt from out on the western touchline. It's going across the face, across the face. Doesn't come back. No goal. 22-16. Seven and a half to go in the game. Parramatta need a converted try to take us into extra time. Now here comes Hayne. This could be a telling kick. Getting underneath it over here is Slater. The defence is coming. Slater takes it, then drops it, then falls he dropped on it. it. But did he knock it on? Yes, yes, he did. Yes, he did. In my view, Billy's knocked that on. This is a massive chance now for Parramatta to level this game up with a scrum from 10 out. Robson away to Lowry. Lowry puts a kick in that's brilliantly fielded in the centre of the field by Hoffman, who gets it up and runs it out. And he may have saved the grand final for the Storm there and then. Three minutes left on the clock. They lead by six points. The ball goes to Cronk. Cronk decides to have a go on his own, and he's taken a solid tackle about 10 metres out on the goal line. Where's Finch? Finch is the go to man. They know it. No, it's Inglis. Inglis has the shot. It looks good. Yep, it man. is good. It's there. Melbourne win the grand final. Greg Inglis is the hero. He scores the brilliant try that got them away by 10 again in the second half and a wobbly old field goal. But three <laughs> minutes left on the clock puts them in front by seven. Melbourne win their second premiership in four years. They're third in 11. Here's taking the ball up Moy Moy as he carts the ball. 12 metres his own side of halfway. He's tackled on the, the 10 metre line. 35 seconds left in the game. 35 seconds left in the season as Mortimer fires a pass to Hayne and that's a bit of rough justice because the man who's taken them all the way to this grand final knocks it on. It's knocked on by Melbourne. The scrum won't pack and Melbourne win the grand final for 2009. The siren will go at any moment. The ref might say, Can, come on fellas, pack the scrum. There's still 14 seconds left on the clock. And this is the first time the realisation has hit the Parramatta players that there's no fairy tale. Yeah. Up until even 58 seconds to go, they were still racing in. But as the clock winds down, it's hit them now. They're not going to win, but Melbourne know they have. Melbourne win the grand final. Their second grand final in four years. They've won at 23 points to 16. Craig Bellamy wins his second competition. Cameron Smith 
makes up for not being part of last year's grand final. Ryan Hoffman missed last year. By gee, those two blokes will be amongst the, a really happy group out there. They've won it, despite the fact that Parramatta got back within six late in the game and almost, almost turned this game into extra time. After the match, Craig Hamilton had the chance to speak with the jubilant Storm coach Craig Bellamy, who outlined the immense pride he had in his troops. This is sweet for you today. Oh, what's that, really? Is this sweet? How sweet is this? This is this is great. You know, like, um, like I say, it's, you know, to to make this occasion tonight has been a huge effort by this club and by these players, and to win it is, yeah. You know, dream come true for all of us so you know i see guys like dane nielsen and ryan tandy and ryan hinchcliffe and you know adam blair hadn't played in a um a winner first grade yeah. side again <laughs> and that's the uh, traditional stamina hey, were you part of that no definitely not no <laughs> Mate, um, but it might be some justice. Four grand finals, uh, you've won two now. Maybe that's a, a bit of a closer indication of your dominance. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know about um, uh, justice. Again, you, know, you, you, you earn your own luck, and like I say, but for these guys to win it, it's, yeah, you know, like, I, you know, we had a big change over this year, and no one really sort of thought we'd go anywhere, but, you know, they've worked really hard, and I'm just so... I'm just so proud of them, Craig. I tell you, I couldn't be more proud of them. Congratulations. You're no longer longer under the radar. Uh, thanks a lot. OK, thanks, mate. Appreciate it. <laughs> Storm halfback Cooper Cronk admitted his side was made to earn their win following the Eels' late fight back. Mate, congratulations. Tremendous performance today. Yeah, thanks, mate. Um, yeah, we're going to say that was a tough grind, mate, I think. Yeah, we put ourselves in a position, then we let them back in, and then they just threw around the ball. Like they've been throwing around for 12 weeks, and, you know, we just... Busted our ass, and I don't know if I can say that on the radio, but... You just have, it's OK. It's all right, mate. So, you know, it's one hell of a job, and, you know, we know how hard and got respect for how hard this competition is, and firstly to make it, but then, you know, finish the day with one hell of a big smile on your face. It's tough work, mate. Midway through the second half, even three-quarters of the way through the second half, Parramatta did get a sniff, didn't they? Yeah, they did, and, um, you know, they've been throwing the ball around for 12 weeks and have been successful, and you knew they would, but, you know, we just tried to limit their... Yeah, impact on the game, and when they throw the ball around like that, it's pretty hard to contain, but we got up off the deck and tackled until we got the ball back, really. How sweet is this victory uh, after the disappointment of heartbreaker last year? Oh, mate, yeah, it, it was a uh, very disappointing last year, mate. It took it a little bit personally, and this ain't going to change what happened last year, mate, but uh, it sort of helps a little bit. Congratulations and well played. Thank you, mate, much appreciated. Storm 5'8", Brett Finch, who started the season with the Eels before being released from his contract mid-season, spoke of how he had now achieved a lifelong goal. Congratulations, mate. You've uh, made an amazing season for you and it's all come to fruition today. Yeah, mate. This is what I've wanted to do since I, you see me running the line for Newcastle as a kid, mate. Uh, we come here last year and I went to the spot where the siren sounded in 04 when we lost. And I said, I ain't, ain't going to finish like that again. And I'm so grateful for the Melbourne Storm, the club and the players and Craig Bellamy for taking a punt on me. This is the best thing I can ever do. It's great. You've experienced the heartbreak of losing one, as you mentioned, uh, at the Roosters, but today, does it make up for it? It's, uh, it's a fantastic feeling for you. It is, mate. It, you know, if, there was, I, had an empty, I had a sick feeling in my guts if I never got another crack and made amends for early in my career. And, oh, I'm just so happy, mate. How close did you come to quitting footy earlier this year? Oh, mate, I remember my parents sat me down and said, look, if you want to give it away, you know, we're right behind you, you know. We're, you don't have to keep playing. I think they've seen in my eyes, my desire and attitude had sort of dropped, but so grateful, mate. Took the punt and went to Melbourne. And a final one, Cooper Cronk and you. It's a special little partnership, and Craig Bellamy just came in there and thanked you, I suppose, because you've guided your side to victory today. Yeah, those two guys were the first people who called me, and Cooper's done so much for me off the field as well, and I just thanked him so much. It's just fantastic, mate. Go and enjoy yourself. Congratulations. Meanwhile, a heartbroken Luke Burt conceded he and his Eels teammates were left with a deep feeling of hurt as a result of their defeat. Commiserations, not your night. No, it wasn't, mate. Um, they came out, they played great footy in the first half, and uh, I guess we just didn't finish opportunities that we had. Midway through the second half, there was a sniff there for Parramatta, wasn't there? 100%, mate. Uh, when we got to 10-6, I really thought there was a, a massive sniff there, but uh, it was a, I think it was a pretty soft try. We, we let in, and, um, yeah, that really hurt us. And then, and then we came back, to our credit, but... Mate, it just weren't good enough on the night. If there's a turning point, that might be it. The Greg Inglis try straight after you guys had scored. Uh, he pulled the bomb out of the air. He seemed to come from nowhere. 100%. That, that's exactly right, mate. I just, yeah, uh, that's it. What a ride, though, for Parramatta this year. 
oh mate, 10 weeks ago, 12 weeks ago, whatever it was, um, we were just happy to get away from the wooden spoon. To, to end up here on a night like tonight was was a great feat, but um, yeah, it still, it still hurts, man. It still hurts. We appreciate you joining us on Grandstand. Well played through the finals and, and again today. No worries. Thanks, mate. Cheers. That's it for the wrap in Season 2009, so thanks for your company. Make sure to log on to www.abc.net.au slash sport and click on the Rugby League tab for all your NRL news across the off-season and join us again in 2010.